Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 3, Part 4. Welcome to Part 4. In this part we will learn about other learning methods that neural networks can employ. These will form the foundations for learning methods that we will see later in this course. And we will also learn about error calculation. It is very important to know how to calculate the error for a neural network. We will begin by looking at learning methods. Supervised learning is perhaps the most common learning method for neural networks, that being supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, the neural network is provided with a set of inputs. For each of these inputs that correspond to the input neurons for the neural network, the expected outputs, which correspond to the output neurons, are provided. The neural network is then trained by crossing over all of these expected um, outputs when presented with the expected inputs. The error is calculated and the neural network is adjusted in such a way so that this error is minimized. Now the exact means by which these weights are adjusted to achieve the supervi supervised results, that varies depending on the training algorithm. In this course, we'll learn about several training algorithms that can be used with supervised learning. Here we see a flowchart that represents a typical supervised training algorithm. We see the first diamond where we check to see if there's any more training patterns. If there are more training patterns, we keep looping through them, adjusting the weights based on the backpropagation rule or another uh, method for calculating and updating the weight matrix. We'll learn more about these later in the course. This loops over all of the, um, all over the patterns. If there are no more patterns, then we check to see if this was the best error rate that we've attained yet. If it is, we store the weights and we increase the epoch by one. Basically, this is called a greedy algorithm because we are only updating the weights if the weights actually improved. This is not often needed for backpropagation. However, other training algorithms, it is necessary because sometimes a training iteration can actually worsen your position. Unsupervised learning is another method that you may use. Unsupervised learning differs from supervised learning in several important ways. The most important is that in unsupervised learning, you provide the neural network with a set of inputs but you do not provide the expected outputs. It is up to the neural network to determine the expected outputs. Unsupervised learning is typically used when you have a large amount of input data and you want the neural network to organize this input data into several groups. We will see this with the Koning neural network that we will learn about later in this course. We will use unsupervised learning for several things. Mostly, however, we will use it for optical character recognition where the neural network is provided with a number of characters and it breaks them into the 26 Latin letters. This flow chart shows a very simple form of unsupervised training. When we get into the Koning neural network later in this course, we will see more advanced methods of unsupervised training. However, what this method does is it executes a learning method, in this case Hebb's rule or something similar, over an arbitrary number of epochs. Hebb's rule simply reinforces what's there already. So this implementation here would execute Hebb's rule and reinforce over 100 iterations what the neural network had already learned. There are other methods that you can use other than Hebb's rule that actually change the weights in such a way so as to maximize the grouping that the neural network is doing. If you wanted to group 26 letters like we'll do later, it adjusts the weights to try to get them into those 26 categories. Error calculation is a very important concept for neural networks, both for supervised training and unsupervised training. For supervised training, Error calculation means the difference between what was expected and what was actually produced. You want to minimize this value. For unsupervised training, error calculation is a little more complex. 
if you have not provided the neural network with any sort of expected output, how can it know what the error rate actually is? Because in unsupervised training, often you want to minimize this error as well. It's done differently. It's done by how evenly the data is distributed across the groups that you're trying to categorize it in, at least if you're doing a categorization. There are other methods as well. We will learn more about unsupervised error calculation later in this course. In the case of supervised training, perhaps the most common method for calculating the error of the neural network is the root mean square approach. Here you see the equation for the root mean square. Root mean square is particularly useful as a means of calculating a mean when the numbers being provided to it are both positive and negative. It works very similar to a typical average. It creates a average of the numbers presented to it. It does this by squaring each of the numbers, dividing by the total number of the set provided, and then taking the square root, which effectively cancels the the square that was originally done to each of these numbers. This neutralizes the effect of the positive and negativity of each of the numbers, which is quite useful in neural networks. Let's look at a quick example of calculating root mean square. Here we will calculate the root mean square for the numbers 1, 3, and 5. We square each of these numbers. 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. Then we sum them. 1, 9, and 25 added together equals 35. This is the first step in calculating the root mean square. Next we divide 35 by 3 because there were three numbers that originally went into the sum. This yields 11.66 approximately. Then we take the square root of 11.66, which approximately yields 3.14. This is the root mean square. Here we see how the root mean square equation is adapted to implement error calculation for a neural network. You'll notice that the values that are being summed are replaced by the actual minus the ideal value. This basically calculates the difference between the actual value that the neural network produced and the ideal input that was, that was sought. We take this number, square it, and we continue on the process of the root mean square in much the same way that we did before. This is just showing how the actual values being summed in the root mean square are actually determined. They are the actual values that are different between the actual and the ideal. The n, the number of values that we're comparing, is the number of items in the actual data set. This concludes part four. In the next part, you will learn about two basic training methods called the Delta Rule and Hebb's Rule, which form the foundation of other training methods that you will learn about in this course. We hope you will continue with part five. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.